once again, J76NY here. We are up to episode number 45 of our playthrough of the Pacific Campaign on War on the Sea. August 17th, 1942. We have 210 command points available to us. Um, take a quick look at the situation in the Solomons where everything is happening. Uh, last episode we hit the Japanese inbound uh, mixed convoy with some air attacks that didn't really do the amount of damage I was hoping. Um, Task Force Mac is in the air, or Task Force Tar Heel, excuse me, is in the area. Uh, they are moving into position to intercept. Uh, we do have the Tautog. Tautog is uh, fully loaded with torpedoes, ready to attack. Uh, trustees patrolling over here. Um, so hopefully if they didn't turn them uh, back, which I doubt they did, uh, Task Force Mac, Task Force Tar Heel is going to intercept them. Um, considering I can't get Task Force Mac out of my head, uh, we're going to come over here to Task Force Mac. Task Force Mac is heading north. Um, they are covered by the Wildcats from the Altahama. Uh, they are in Task Force 40, which is going to be going up uh, to deposit troops on uh, Rabal. Uh, we do have a supply convoy inbound right here. Uh, they are they have 2,000 troops and the rest is supplies uh, so they're going to be uh, heading in to Rabal as well uh, we do have a severe deficit of troops and supplies um, so that's going to be a needed envoy uh, task force Mac like I said is heading north um, I was trying to avoid doing this because I want these bases as intact as possible uh, to use for my own uh, future operations uh, and the command points that the uh, base levels give you. But I think uh, Rabal is just going to be uh, too much of a hassle uh, without reducing it somewhat. So Task Force Mac at some point is going to be heading in and bombarding Rabal. Uh, that'll give the ground troops a little bit of an advantage as well. Uh, Barnes, on her own, is heading back to uh, rearm with uh, planes. Uh, Altahama and Shortland are going to be the ones that are going to be providing air cover for the uh, ongoing operations in Rabal. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's going to have to do for now. I'm not going to uh, backtrack on this. Um, so that's the situation right now in the Solomons. Uh, Japanese are throwing a bit of a monkey wrench into my uh, focus on Rabal. Um, kind of a good strategy on their part. I don't know if it's just like a computer-generated thing or if the AI actually has something in mind that, like a distraction, demonstrate over here, take my attention away from over here, and then hit me with a ton of bricks kind of hoping that doesn't happen but um it very well might uh enterprise is almost back to midway to uh, rearm her air wing uh, she does have damage so when i release her she's going to be out for a little bit um we have our fuel convoy also almost back to midway after a month of traveling back um we have the uh macaulay here with their uh 2,000 troops. Uh, we did get uh, command points weekly, or we will very shortly. Um, but for right now, I'm going to throw together another surface group. Uh, surface group is going to include the wasp, or maybe the hornet. I think it's the same price, so... Uh, Yorktown class is 125. Uh, Lexington's 130. And the Wasp is 110. 
All right, so we're going to go with the Wasp. She is a little bit cheaper. Um, yeah, we're about five months out from having the Essex class. Uh, Wasp is going to be joined by... Not yet. Going to be joined by a Bogue. It's 55 command points. That's leaving us with uh, 50. Nope. Try that one again. Yeah, 50. 45. Whatever. 45 command points to give them some form of escort, uh, which is going to be... Let's see what we can throw in here. That's decent. Uh, they're not bad. I'm gonna throw an Atlanta in there at least um, for light cruisers. How many do we have left? We only have three Atlantas left. The rest of them are out in the, in operations now. Uh, we've got a St. Louis. That's 20. Cleveland's 20 as well. Omaha is 17. That'll put us up to 200. Um, almost thinking it's be better to throw a couple of these Fletchers in there. It'd be 18, it'd be 2, 1. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll go with this wasp battle group. All right, so there's that. If you're wondering why there's a U appearing after every P I type, it's because uh, P is my hotkey to pause the recording, so I'm trying to keep it simple for myself here. Alright, so Wasp Battle Group is now in operation. Um, get them good formation for them would be. I got two carriers. One and four. I could probably use another destroyer. I've got the command points for it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw another Fletcher in here. Grab the Jenkins. But while we're on the Fletcher class, let's take a look at what we have. We have a shit ton of Fletchers. Every single Fletcher available. But the one I want to highlight is this one right here, the USS The Sullivans. Uh, named for the Sullivan brothers that died on the Juno uh, during Operation Watchtower <coughs> in uh, Iron Bottom Sound, I believe. Uh, the Fletcher and the Cleveland class uh, light cruiser uh, USS Little Rock, which is... Right there, are both at the Buffalo Naval Park in Buffalo, New York, which is uh, less than an hour away from me. I've been up there uh, very a few times. I had family pictures done on the uh, ships a couple years ago. 
Uh, if you're ever in the Buffalo area and you want a really good experience uh, seeing uh, Cleveland class and a um, Fletcher class destroyer, as well as uh, various aircraft, and uh, they have a sub too, although the name of it uh, escapes me right now. But if, anyway, if you're ever in that area, uh, check out the Buffalo Naval Park. It's uh, well worth the time and the money spent. So, there we go. Anyway, Jenkins. I'm going to join up with our convoy. Not that one. Okay, Macaulay, well, you got to go somewhere else just to get you out of the way here. Um, but I'm going to join them up, and then they're going to head out to the front lines. Obviously, they're going to be the ones uh, providing the primary air cover for Rabal. Um, the Yorktown's going to have to come out soon. Um, we do get uh, another round of command points in fairly soon. I think I'll do the math, and then... Uh, We'll know when the uh, Lexington's going to get her relief. So, let's get into today's episode. First to arrive at Rabal is Task Force Mac. Uh, really didn't want to do this, but I don't see as though I have a choice here. What did we do? Level three and a level five. There's that. Three and a level four. All right, so we got him down to a level three and a level four. I believe that's all Task Force Matt can do. Yep. We're gonna come back down the Guadalcanal and rearm. And then the ships of Task Force 40, I gotta rename that here. They're on their way in. It is midnight, 1 a.m. A little bit longer here, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, let's go with unload all cargo. And double check. No, everyone's empty. So, we got two and a half hours. So they'll get here. <laughs> they'll get here before they get hit. Uh, but they're gonna race. They're gonna race the clock and uh, hopefully get a, as far away as possible. Um, I did split off the Craven, Juno, and Haman from uh, this supply convoy right here, um, which could actually probably head back. 
Uh, we don't have... Yeah. Anderson's going to stick around in the area for now. Um, one. Eyes. What do we have down here on Guadalcanal? We got enough on Guadalcanal. I may kind of split the supplies up uh, in between Shortland and Guadalcanal. Uh, these guys are headed up. Um, Task Force 40. Let's have you switch uh, ahead this way for now. <clears throat> I don't think Barnes moved. One of the glitches in this game that I'm not exactly fond of is um, sometimes your ships just you don't go anywhere. All right, well, they're out. They're headed out. Uh, Enterprise is back. <clears throat> Get her closer so we can release her. No idea where these guys went over here. Haven't seen them. Um, if they send them back, they send them back. It works just as well. Uh, what I'm going to do here. Get guys. Back up to Midway. After dropping off her load of troops and supplies, the task force with Altahama and cargo ships don't have to wait long before the inevitable airstrikes begin. Altahama's remaining eight Hellcats move into position to attack the Japanese inbound attack craft. Even though the airfield has been reduced with a shore bombardment and the Japanese air wings are still weaker than normal due to previous engagements with the Americans, they still pose a serious threat to Altahama and her charges. Roughly an hour later, the next airstrike comes in. Wildcats from Shortland have joined the Hellcats from Altahama and are ready for the attack. Many of Altahama's Hellcats damaged and running low on ammo. They know that they're going to have to land soon to rearm and patch up the holes in their planes. This will put them in a position no aviator wants to be in. Grounded 
with bogeys in the area. All right, back at Midway, Enterprise is back, and let's uh, see how long it is before. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and do something here real quick before I release Enterprise. I just I don't want her to be out of the fight for too long. Uh, let's try and do this, and it didn't work. So, there we go. Enterprise is out, and she will be out for six days. Not as bad as what I was thinking, um, but still, uh, it's six days I don't really want her out for. Um, the situation on Rabal right now... Uh, about 50-50. I think that'll improve once the um, once the supplies arrive. They're around here somewhere. I've got them moving up this way, so transport three. Yep, there. And base force one's moving in. Shortland has a lack of engineering. Let's see, Base Force 1, we've got supplies, 117 engineering, so if I put half there, I'm probably just going to put them all there. And then our next round, we can grab some more engineering uh, for Guadalcanal. This Guadalcanal is not really in bad of shape right now. In terms of uh, what they need to rearm, so we are moving forward with our uh, invasion of Rabal. It's not going too bad. That's about the best I can say about it. Uh, Wasp battle groups making their way down, so progress is being made. By noon on the afternoon of August the 18th. The Japanese air attacks have dwindled to the point of using float planes. Although slow and less maneuverable, they are heavily armed and still pose a threat to the ships and planes fighting them. A fact that the combat pilots are all too aware of Past losses among their ranks due to engagements with these float planes have been high, to say the least. All eyes on every ship are trained skyward as a lone float plane breaks off from the main group and approaches the convoy. Luckily, the bombs from the float plane fell short. But with another supply convoy inbound, USS Altahama's long day is just beginning. After thinking the matter through, the commander of the group decides that they need some breathing room, and the call goes out for volunteers to form a skeleton crew and board the most damaged Arcturus transport in the fleet. These brave sailors board their ship and are given extra provisions, life rafts, and other survival gear, and a promise that once things settle down, they will be picked up 
by the next available convoy that comes through the area. They have accepted the risks of their unconventional rear guard duty and the possibility that they may be in the water for quite some time. Their sacrifice is noted, and after watching them steam away in the opposite direction towards danger, the group's commander wastes no time in putting every single one of their names in for the highest accommodation service allows the Medal of Honor. All right, so we made it to nightfall. Um, our Lone Ark tourists out here wasn't attacked again, but I'm assuming that they're going to uh, have to deal with that in the next day when they get some planes back. Um, our tourist right here is gonna head in ahead of the convoy. Uh, we've got the Altahama with Transport 3 now, uh, kind of marking time. They're going to uh, try and time it so that they don't really have to worry about air attacks um, for the most uh, majority of their trip in and out, but I'm sure they will. Um, we've got 2,000 troops and uh, probably, oh, I don't know. Another maybe 9,000 supplies to add to this. Um, we're burning through supplies like crazy, so uh, those are definitely needed there. Um, Task Force Mac is down here, and we are going to rearm them. Okay, everybody's rearmed. Um, they're going to come up here. Uh, I've got this vampire uh, that I had to boot from transport three to um, make room for the uh, Altahama. So they're gonna join up with Task Force Mac uh, when they get up there. Let's see what Guadalcanal looks like now. Uh, still looking all right, but we're gonna need um, engineering and fuel uh, fairly soon. So luckily, our slow-moving fuel convoy is back at back at midway here. If I can figure out how to do it. There we go. Gonna load them up with fuel. And get them moving back. Uh, first stop's going to be Midway, I mean, uh, Guadalcanal, and then uh, two of the four are going to unload there. The other two are going to unload on Shortland. And uh, we'll deal with that probably in about five episodes when they actually make it down there. Um, things aren't really going too bad here on Rabal. Um, Barnes is slowly making her way back up. And uh, Wasp is making her way down, so we are going through the motions. Skeleton crew on the transport watches the skies as two Japanese bombers move in. Their bomb bay doors are open, and the few guns on board the transport open up in an attempt to shoot down these beasts before they make their strike.
Relief over the near miss is replaced by horror as a pair of torpedo bombers is sported, spotted off the port quarter. With reduced mobility due to damages, the hopes of evading both torpedoes are slim. And yet Lady Luck makes her presence known on board this transport, and the ten crew members Breathe a sigh of relief as the torpedoes disappear off into the distance. Transport ships aren't the only one to come under air attack. As the three columns split into individual units, the northernmost column, consisting of two Atlanta-class anti-aircraft cruisers and a destroyer, ramp up their engines to full speed and move to intercept the torpedo bombers. With one torpedo bomber already shot down, the remaining plane moves in on the attack. Anti-aircraft guns on all ships open up on the lone plane. Luckily for Task Force Mac, their gunner's aim is true, and the threat is eliminated for now. Now that the Japanese are aware of a allied surface group in the area, this will no doubt be the only or the last attack that they have to defend themselves against. Okay, guys, it's going to do it for today's episode here. Um, let me know what you think about the uh, format that I used today. I tried to go with a completely uh, narrative uh, approach to uh, this episode. Um, I didn't really want to show every single second of every single air attack. I could have probably gotten about two or three episodes out of it, but that type of thing is uh, not exactly exciting to watch. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about uh, how I presented this episode. Um, if you have any tips or advice, add those as well. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you would like to follow along, we just started three new series last week um, that I'm pretty excited about. Plus, our War on the Sea and Strategic Command will continue. You don't want to miss that. It's all fun and exciting for the most part. Hit the subscribe and click that bell so you know when the episodes go up. 
We'll pick this up again in episode number 46, J76NY, saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.